it. really close. Hello and welcome to BZG's Talking Shit. My name is Barrett Courtney, and here with me are my two co-hosts and friends, Henry Monsiero. And I don't Ricky have to care. <laughs> and Ricky Baldesson. And here at Talking Shit, what we do is one of us brings in a topic of dis- discussion, and we talk some shit about that topic. Again, my name is Jack Moody, and our topic of discussion today is, is Pop Punk Dead? Yes. I'm going back into Barrett form here. But seri- in all seriousness, here, is Pop Punk Dead? You should turn your hat. You should take that off. You should just take it off, yeah. My hair's a little flat today. It's hella hot in here, bro. Yeah? <laughs> You're right next to the... Uh, Oh, oh, yeah, you got a little oh, window there. This is hella my fault. Why is it so hard? Just pull the handle over there. You can't. Kind of hilarious. Oh, there it goes. I'm just going to leave my hair like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're a devil. Okay. No, I got to put the hat on. I have a bad hair day today. Um, oh, so much better. Okay, you feel better? Ah, uh, so good. So in all seriousness... Enter the uh, light, Ricky! Uh, no more poking fun at our friend Jack Moody, who is a big fan dark. of pop punk. Enter um, the dark. Is Pop Punk dead? Yes. Next question. Yes. Next question. Um, Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching BCG News. Leave comments Not news below. Talking shit. And then we just have like a twenty minute end but, credits. But what is Pop Punk is dying? Definitely. But what has led to this muddled story so far? Genre? Next question. Two things. Two things. Um, pop Punk bands taking themselves way too seriously. Camp and. Two uh, pop punk bands breaking up like like they've been together for hella long and they haven't. Like who? Like um, uh, I'd pop, uh My Chemical Romance doesn't really count, but it does. Like they. Broke... Mm, they're not really pop punk though. They're more emo. Yeah. I know, but I'm just hardcore. I'm trying to. I can't think of any pop punk bands, but like I think that's another thing. At least like with like genres in general dying, like the bands break up way too early. Yeah, uh, set your goals definitely died. Like they didn't even way like, too early. Like they get really old, they never give their band even a chance. That's um, ridiculous. Yeah, I would I would blame a lot on it of the story so far. Another thing is the bands just getting really famous really early, really fast. Yeah, like they reach and can, they reach this height, especially the story so far. They've reached this height where they think they're more famous than anyone else who ever lived in Walnut Creek. All ten of them. Um, they, they're at this height where they think they can just do anything and people will like them. And for, uh, for the and next for couple of, for the next couple of years, that'll probably be the situation because people who are fans of the story so far are so fucking blindsided to how not good they are anymore, you know? Not at all. Um... Especially their new, their new album is just fucking garbage. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, yeah, we gave it. A p- um, it, it, it's just not interesting and in, inspired. Uh, it's not inspired whatsoever. No, know? it is and not. This, it it's, it sounds exactly like all their other stuff. It, it, it doesn't can, sound like all of their other stuff. It just sounds bland, bland and toned down. Yeah. Um, and like it also has meal. to do. It also has Girl. to do with like pop punk artists limit themselves to three topics: girls, Girl. friends, and pizza. And I know that's like a like a big thing in the pop punk scene or whatever, but there's got to be more shit to talk about. I don't it doesn't need to be like. Don't you mean girls, friends, and angst? Because they don't really sing about pizza, do they? I'm, it was a joke, Henry. It, it was a joke. joke. What is comedy? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like the, another thing about pop punk. It's like it takes so much credit for like oh people being angsty or like being whiny and shit but that's you what you get closer to the mic um people being angsty and people being whiny but that's kind of what fucking music is in general we're always going against something we're always crying about something you know what i mean yeah we're it doesn't always... have to be though it doesn't like that's not exactly what pop punk is that's fucking music in general because you know what you get when you have music that isn't fighting anything mm-hmm. jesus is a friend Jesus is my friend. Jesus, Jesus is, is my a friend. friend. I have a friend in Jesus. Jesus is my friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like the. It's almost like these bands are taking that way too Jesus. way too seriously. Yeah. So they they try they, to yeah, be even whinier to, they, and whinier. They, they, they try to take these dumb subjects that have been overridden about and take them like super seriously, but not, but not in the way that like. Taking things seriously, like girl problems and all this, uh, not that that's bad. It's just all of these pop punk 
bands don't know how to write for shit at all. For shit, real friends are terrible songwriters. So- songwriting lyrics is so fucking bland. It's they dumb. are all the same. I had a girlfriend, now she's gone with my sleepy eyes and bony knees. Yeah, exactly. Um, you, you, you just gotta fucking move past your fucking... Get over the girl that you broke up with in and, sixth grade. And and write about shit that matters. that matters. You don't have to fucking be whiny to be pop punk. Exactly. You don't fucking have to do that. Like, the For fucking the show that me and Annie went to was... It was um, Have Mercy, Cruel Hand, mm-hmm. uh, Real Friends, and Neck Deep. Mm. Real Friends was headlining. Mm. And most of the show was this fucking, like, depressing spoken word. Like, not that these guys are talented. They're, they're really good at writing. Mm. But they're doing it wrong. They're yeah. not using their power to, like, the right, fucking, like, the right fucking way. It was just really depressing, and I wanted to leave. Yeah. It was really sad. It doesn't like, need to about, be that. Think about how, like, pop punk started with, like... Well, not, like, started, but, like, the second wave, I guess, after the Ramones technically count as the first wave since they started punk, and they were also really a pop punk band. Yeah. So, like, with Blink-182 and Sum and Green, the Sums, the Led Zeppelins, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Sum 41, Blink-182. The Sum 41 is a little, a little later. Yeah. Um, Blink-182 and Green Day, obviously, they popped up in 94, Four. 95. Green, Green Day, 90, like, oh. didn't, write a, didn't, didn't write serious songs. They wrote songs yeah. about getting high, killing your neighbors. And fuck you. Yeah, exactly. It was punk. Yeah. It was like what punk it was. Yeah, they were more on the punk side, and then Blink-182 was obviously a, writing about girlfriends and writing about jerking off. Now my bathroom. girlfriend! Um, and... Bowling for Soup was just a... Bowling for Soup is a fucking train wreck. Um, that's all I'm going to say about Bowling for Soup, because I don't count them as pop punk. But high school never ends. Um, I think, what could save pop punk? The Wonder Years four take year getting on medication. Yeah, four the, years strong. Four years strong, definitely. Um, their album, they're going back and being fucking fun. Yeah, they're they're the only. Happy and they're not fucking... they're not writing about like girls and all this shit. And I, it's probably it's a generational thing because they are much older than all of these other artists. What are they? What what are their songs about? Um, this new it. album is a lot about like. Um, but no, like uh, I'll just write about like um. Improving from their past mistakes and sort of leaving a name behind and all this stuff, um, because they've so obviously they can like go down in history. Exactly. Um, Actually, I think that's just what pop put, pop punk needs is for them to grow the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. Like that's when Blink One Eighty Two got good. Yeah, that's when Blink One Eighty Two got good. Was and they were still writing about relationships, but they did it in a much more mature way. You like. The fact that they were referencing sexy. Nightmare Before Christmas and it was still a more mature love song, yeah, that shows how pop punk needs to grow up. Yeah. Um, I think... Because uh, uh, I love pop punk. I loved it. That's your That's, your that's my bread and butter. And then you realize Man Overboard sucks. And so then I realize Man... Is- like, Man Overboard is the prime example of like what's wrong with pop punk. Every song sounds the same. The they're subject is a, they're all about girls, and the Next bad day, the bad singing them. isn't I guess is bad the singing. The best singers pop. are always bad. Yeah. Well, no, that's not the problem. That's not though. no. Because for your song, those guys are fucking talented singers. Yeah. they've got some voices. Um, but the singing isn't the the Yeah, problem. we always expect that yeah. with stuff. Like especially with like you and me, our love for like Lou Reed and Bob Dylan. Of course like I listen to the front bottoms, okay. Yeah, you listen yeah. to the front bottoms like, and like I think that, that guy sucks I at think singing. That but he's with, great. That goes with punk in general. Like yeah. they these are like punk started with like kids that didn't know how to of. fucking play their instruments or sing. They did it because they fucking wanted to. Exactly. Like it's not about that. It's about yeah. They fucking need like the germs. There are good. Like, in, there are good singers and there are interesting singers. Lou Reed's an interesting singer. He's interesting. Bob Dylan's an interesting singer. Um, I would say even go close to saying Dan Campbell from The Wonder Years is an interesting singer. I wouldn't say he's a great singer, but he makes you listen to the words. Um, Four Years Strong. I, those guys are fucking great singers. You yeah, like no, you hear them do like an acoustic set and they're I fucking. I wish I could fucking sing like those guys. Those guys are ridiculous. Uh, Real yeah. friends can't sing. And no, he he can't he can't sing whatsoever. Um, 
Yeah, I was at a live show for them like a, uh, a couple months ago. And Mark Mark Hoppus can sing to a certain point. Yeah, um, I, I think Tom yeah, Launch can't. The the bands that need to be more f- put more focus on. I think the Wonder Years has like good momentum going. Um, just oh, there's a lot of hype for their new album. They need to find like a left turn to make. Yeah. Um, I think this is another thing. I mean, in my I might be completely fucking wrong, but. Um, we had like at least like when the first or second or I guess the second wave of it, when we had Green Day, Blink, Blink. and stuff. These were kids that were listening to the, first, the Descendants. The, they were the, listening to like punk. Yeah. They were listening to all these different types of music. We have Blink One Eighty Two. They loved the Cure. Yeah, like, they I mean, love the Cure. Their for music, fuck's sake. their music range was so much larger. But all the bands now are like doing it because they love. That blank, blank, blank so like much. Specifically so they're blank. trying to copy that so much like that they're, they're not, not even copying they're not trying other to... pop punk bands. Like the only pop punk band that sounds like Sum Forty One is Four Years Strong because they're the only ones who know how to use riffs. That's very true. Yeah, um, and, and, that's the, the thing, and they like, hardly sound like Sum Forty One. Yeah, you know? and it's just because they've they know have how to play their fucking instruments. Yeah, that's the thing. Like they I actually like Sum Forty One. They're just oh, they're, yeah. they're trying so hard to sound like this second wave. That they're not focusing on like different types of music, like punk. What? Punk and that's why emo doesn't... is getting really interesting again, because you've got your yeah. band like Air. the Hotelier, which uh, their album um, "Home Like No Place Is There" is like my album of 2014. That fucking album is awesome because like yeah, it's emo. They like their first album was very pop punk. If you like go back and listen to that, they're not the same band. Because um, you can those bands come so all the pop punk bands come from Blink 182. Which were a, sort of, which were like three guys who just played silly songs about ca- say calling your calling your mom and saying this your 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 husband was arrested for sodomize so, yeah someone, and then all the emo bands are coming from brand new, and American football yeah, yeah. actual good bands yeah. Because American football were like these college kids that made one album mm-hmm. and then never met each other again until like 10 years later. Yep. And that album's great. Yep. And then you have Brand New, which is great and needs to release they a were, new album already. They were great. Until Daisy. Until Daisy. I think Daisy was very unfocused. But I think their, their, new, their new song, or there's two songs out now, right? They they sound better than what Daisy was so far. So I'm excited. Um, I don't but yeah, think the hotel years terrible, just unfocused. Yeah, um, I don't think they put out a bad. Album. Hotel years is uh, like a guy who sounds like Russian City soundtrack guy. Yes. Right. Open the curtain. Those guys are really fucking good. Um, yeah, that, that album is basically like what brand new's like missing album would have been. There's yeah. not actually a missing album, but like the transition from um, your favorite weapon to Deja Anton Du. It it's like, like a mixture. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a total flip. Like, yeah. you didn't expect that. Hoteliers, that album um, is like the perfect mix of those two albums. And because they've got, got, like, yeah, they've got, like, this obviously, like, brand new sound. But then, like, a lot through that album, I was hearing a lot of REM. And I even had my mom listen to it, who's a yeah. huge REM fan. And even she was like, oh, shit, yeah. Like, I totally hear that. So, they're, Emo is definitely, they have better sources of where to draw from. This is the thing, like I said before, like how like they're they're trying to be like the second generation, like pop, 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 the punk in general. It's it's almost like this upside down pyramid where get, it's almost like closer. this it's almost like this upside down pyramid where like when it started we had all these different like punk wasn't just one thing. Yeah. Punk was like you could there you could add ska, you could be like super reggae. You we mm-hmm. had like New York hardcore. Yep. You know we had all these different yeah, types of like, fucking punk. And then it just and then down. it's like narrowing and, down. And now, and now everyone wants to sound like Black Flag or Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, like yeah. either either now it's like either you're pop punk or like you're like straight edge New York hardcore, and that's even that's complete. The hardcore doesn't even fucking count. Like that doesn't point. even count anymore. It just it's it's it not it the just fucking mixed same. with metalcore now. Yeah, because it's all just guys going. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like that doesn't even fucking count. Like that's already a separate thing now. That's so, why. That's why when I get my punk band together, Ricky, do you want to be in my punk band? Yeah, be- <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah. Because I want to bring punk back to what it used to be, where it's people making music that they love and mixing shit up. Yeah. Like it was, it was to a point where punk, punk wasn't even about like what the fuck you sounded like. It was about your attitude yeah. and what the fuck to being your own person. Yeah. Now it's all we have to be this type of person. We have to sound like this. The we Saints. Have to do this. People well, have because people have a, to like us. It's because we're in a very capitalist fucking country. 
or if you don't sound like something just so frustrating <laughs> that is marketable like this pop punk sound is marketable so people are trying to copy it so fucking much yep. they're not trying to do this and this is the fucked up thing they're not trying to write these songs to um bring out emotion to, to bring out emotion or to or to connect connect to people or to further the industry they're just trying to get their fucking 10 cents and then dip which is what's fucked up about real friends i don't care what the fuck they say what they're trying to tell me about what they stand for what your lyrics say because it's it's all the same bullshit you're fucking marketing yourself to me don't tell me that you're that you fucking you're one of me and and oh like we're all a group we're all a tribe bullshit because you guys have been marketing yourselves it's corporate bullshit yeah, it's it's the same which shit. Which is funny because like and, and until it's recently they just got signed. Yeah, know? it's funny to me because I have a story so far shirt. And we're in the front of it. it says posers with a red like, like no posers. Yeah, like, they're such posers. Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say story so far are posers. I would say real friends. Um, Man overboard. They're a boy band. They're boy bands. Um, like they're what Blink One Eighty Two is parodying and all the small things. Like, exactly. Like, do you really? Are you actually feeling all of this bullshit it's in your lyrics? I'm feeling so, it. Um, <laughs> the thing that has ruined, I think, pop punk is the fucking hipsters. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Henry takes offense. As the because biggest... Man Overboard, those guys are fucking hipsters. Yeah, when you yeah. watch their music videos, they're yeah. playing it ironically. No, they're not. It's just like the hipster style. They're, they're playing aesthetic. it off as ironic, but it's not. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You're not listening. No, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not listening. listening. No, 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 it's no, no, like Linda. this whole, nim, 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 nim. the hipster <laughs> aesthetic where it's all like... Yeah. We don't care. And, and sort of the style of like what they like to present themselves as, you know? I, I get ruins. what you're saying. Yeah. That has... Oh. Re- it, watch the fucking... Um, what's, the, what's the one song they have? Uh... Um, Montrose or whatever that watch that like music video and you're just like this is not pop punk this is not no this is like a fucking feel good hipster music video yeah. that was written by Mr. Corporate Man yeah. you know um, and I so, hate to sound like oh, the corporations are trying to get into this man but something that's sort of like that's, that's sort kind of the fucking deal that's kind of like our generation's way of and like, that's why these like emo that. bands are so interesting because not a lot of them have been signed they can do what they want to fucking do yeah know? like uh, the La hotel Dispute not, or the, the kimbe a lot of dispute a lot of La dispute i never know how to pronounce it um I, I is the hotel you're signed I, I forget um something else i want to say to pop punk fans pop well, punk fuck yourselves pop punk will not be better until you kick front porch step out of all this shit well, they he he's already uh, off of War Tour. They kicked him off of War Tour. But of if you're whole... a pop punk fan, stop listening to a guy who fucks seventeen year olds. Exactly. Yeah. Don't really. support that shit. Like, um, like what a bunch of people say, like in, in the journal- journalism world, is vote for it, vote with your wallet and don't fucking support that kind of shit. You know. Um, but also, just like like people stop going to and Woody Allen. The thing I, I yeah. don't fucking don't. understand. You have all of these girls who like. Are super f- like feminists and stuff, and like want to like bring the rights of women. And I totally agree with that. I totally stand by that. And that's, that's we a agree good with cause. the women's rights movement. Yes, um, the men's rights. Then, <laughs> we're feminists. Those same being fucking feminist. girls. Yeah. The same fucking girls are fans of the story so far, which shame women in ways. If you listen to the first album, it was the uh, daughters or whatever. That is a very sexist fucking misogynist song. song. Misogynist yeah. song, and yeah. it's like, like, and he's like shaming this girl for like being drunk in a party and all this stuff. Like, that out for you? Yeah, and all of this like sort of sad boy okay. like friend zone bullshit. Friend zone is bullshit. You know what? But let me finish. But let me finish. I'm sorry. I need to go on this fucking rant because I've had I've held this in since the first time I ever listened to this song. <laughs> is you've got all this misogynist bullshit and like people like support them and they don't actually like listen to that song and think oh he's actually like shaming a girl who he might not even know like why she's getting drunk she might be going through her own problems and stuff and then but it's like no the story so far is this band you can't touch because they're just so perfect no it's fuck it's, that. This, it's this whole fuck that fuck you guys it's this whole idea of like you you only want to be in your own problems and you want to shame everyone else for having their own problems and not focusing on yours. Yeah, the, yeah. there's too much talk about like girls don't like me. I you think know, talking, having a few songs about uh, cheating, 
partner, I think, is fine. That's obviously a trouble that people go through time to time, and yeah. it's, it's, it's a... It's that's a, I mean, that's a reasonable people, thing to be fucking upset about. I mean, some but people, it's like, even like they've come to ex- ex- accept it in some ways, like cheating on your partner, like... like or being cheated on us. Yeah, like, did you see that post where it was like, I pretended, it was like this guy tweeted, like, I pretended to be my girl and asked her side man to pick me up some dinner. <laughs> like that's what you're. You find out that your your girlfriend's cheating on you, and that's what you do. Yeah, like it's know. it's all kind of weird and strikes of like just weird accepting it. Fucking play some time right now, man. Um, yeah. So I don't understand like how the story so far hasn't been fucking like ridiculed, ridiculed yeah. for that that song and for a lot of their other shit about girls don't like me. Girls don't like. They don't like me. <laughs> And the same, like, the real real friends, he's obviously, every single song, he's talking about this one fucking girl. And it's like, dude, if this all started, I'm going to blame this on one fucking band. And it's not Blink-182. It's not Green Day. It's not Sum 41. It's not Four Year Strong. It's the band Four Year Strong hates. A Day to Remember. A Day to Remember. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! Let, Let the shooting stop. range begin! Spent three fucking albums about this one relationship. Guess that's the downfall of this band. <laughs> this is the downfall of this fucking genre. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. He okay. spent three albums talking about this girl, and then, like, that, like... And it's not to say that any, like... There were some songs off of those three albums that were bad. There I don't some even, that were good. I don't even want to blame it on that band in general. Just the, Jeremy McKinnon. Jeremy McKinnon is ruining the fucking genre. Go have singer? a listen yeah. to Neck Deep's... Uh, can't kick up with the roots. He's producing their new album. Neck Deep is my favorite fucking and pop he, punk band. And here's the thing: Neck Deep, their their last and album, Wishful Thinking, yeah. and then the one before that was the EP. They're a good band. The singer, I think, it has like a really good, is good fucking has vocal great, range. I, I need to listen this to this new Neck song. It's really good. He's like, um, he's auto tuned. Yeah, he's super auto tuned. He's like two octaves higher than it's he should be. Bullshit. Wait, like uh, audibly auto tuned or like that? You have to listen to it and hear that, like... You have to hear... You, you have to hear that, like... He's obviously singing in a range, like, that too far high up that, like, they decided to put up, you know? Uh, it, it's not, like, the obvious, like, shit that they put into, like... The T-Pain kind of auto Yeah, not that kind no, of shit. Not that I kind like of it shit. when auto-tune is like that because then you're obviously using it as, like part of the song but when you use it to cover up the fact that you can't sing but it's not even that like because he he can can sing it's just they and it's a pointless fucking tool that they use jeremy jeremy mckinnon wanted him to sound a certain way that's not fucking because jeremy mckinnon can't fucking sing for shit and so he's a big supporter of of autotune and bringing his vocal pitch up higher and it uh, just listen to that song it's so like it had so much potential to be really good and then that once like, he starts singing, I'm just like I. I feel like I'm listening to Chunk No Captain Chunk, like, which I, sucks. I've which always, sucks. I've hey always dudes, like a, are you ready to? I've always had like an on-off relationship with liking Neck Deep, but it was more stable than any other like third generation pop punk band I've ever listened to. And then I finally like decided, okay, I fucking love these guys. And then this I was excited. I was up. excited for this new fucking song. And then you told me about it. And then I go to listen to it. I just closed my computer and was just like, fuck. You went to bed. I was like, done. See, this I'm like, is, that's bullshit, and I know it's his fault. This is why, like, my favorite pop punk bands at the moment, are, at least modern ones, are the ones that are closer to, like, the emo folk punk kind of thing, like exactly. the front like, bottoms the front, uh, the or mixtapes. The ones yeah. that are, like... I like mixtapes because they're adorable and they're doing Hashtag bring mixtapes back. Yeah. Did they, they break up? Yeah, ha- they broke up a ha- uh, Hashtag adorable bases. Um... Yeah, that bassist is so... I follow him on Twitter. He's, yeah. Or, not Twitter, Instagram. He's yeah. adorable. Um, they're all from Ohio, which is awesome. Is so I'm from... I won't have any I'm from Ohio! I'm from Ohio! And, like, I like the Wonder Years because you can hear that, like, the whole time, like, Dan... Ca- like, Soupy wants to do, like, more folk stuff than the band is letting him. And that's why, like, Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties was a really good album. Yeah, they talked about, like, in the preview for uh, The Greatest Generations how there's a lot of arguments about what the album should have sounded like. And I think it was definitely a fight between Dan and the rest of the band. Like, I want it to be, like, a little more, like, folky. out here and folky. And then the Like, you can the band tell that like, he listens to more Especially, Bob like, the yeah. They're There with, um... Like how that sounds. You're just trying. To uh, or no, like musically, like yeah. the instrumentation in that album or in that song is definitely 
way different from what the rest of the album is. Um, but definitely with Aaron West and the Roaring Twenties, like huge, obviously influenced by Bob Dylan. Yeah. That's that's it's what awesome. I love and about them. It has Mountain Goats cover, so I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love about them because you can hear how much more they want to do with their music and push themselves to do exactly. shit. Exactly, because they're listening else, to actual fucking they're, musicians. Yeah, they're like, listening to so much more and different music. And all these great bands music. claim that they listen to like Misfits and like... I like the Misfits, man. I like the Clash. I like Dis- the Ramones. And, and Descendants and all this shit, but they're obvious... When, you, you hear their the products, it's heart. obviously, like, you know. they're just listening to, like, Blink. Or yeah. Green Day. Like, Not even really Green Day. Just, yeah. like, probably, like, 21st century Blink. Like, yeah, like, God. like the Wonder Years, you know they listen to that shit because they're pushing themselves. They're not settling for this bullshit. Yeah. They're going to do what the fuck they want like, to do. They don't care what people think pop punk is, what who's listening to it or anything. They're going to do what they want to do. The Wonder Years is the most punk fucking band in pop punk, period. I wouldn't say most punk. I would say that. Who do you, who do you say is more punk? Like the most Chunk, no ch- Captain Chunk. I'd say they're <laughs> the, the most punk. punk? I don't know. Again, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like my phone here I'm thinking like I, attitude and not caring. I w- oh man, that's a hard question. I would Kanye. <laughs> Kanye was. Or also modern baseball. Modern baseball is like yeah. a more folky emo. Yeah, and that's why I like them. I would have to like, even though like. Because the story so far has, like, a punch to them. I would say the story so far is more punk. That, like, I don't... I'm not, agree. I'm not I'm, saying I'm, with, I don't, like... I don't think they're a good band. I'm not saying with, like... Aggr- I'm not saying with, like... Sound. With, like, direct... Uh, with, like, with sound and direct aggression. Because I'm not, I'm not saying, like, that's what punk is. I'm saying, like, with attitude and doing what they want to mm. do. Because mm. at that's the end of the day, that's what punk no, is. No, I think that's front bottoms. To front, be honest. Uh, like, punk. doing, like, what the fuck, like, whatever they want. Because the front know? bottoms are just this guy's like, hey... They're, can't liter- sing. they're literally like the like modern version of television. <laughs> Damn. That's, yeah. That's a that, no. It's funny you say that because you know what band sounds exactly like television and also sucks now. The Strokes. Yeah. <laughs> See all those early like post punk garage rock revival bands. They all sound like television or Joy Division. Interpol sounds exactly like Joy Division, but yeah. that's getting off topic. Um, but like I like Front Bottoms because they're like, actually you know they're like. The, have you ever heard of the Saints? Yeah. Nope. So the Saints are this early punk band. For, for their album Eternally Yours, they did shit that no other punk band was doing because they were all afraid of doing it. They added like, they added a song with a strong horn section and they added acoustic guitars, and so they were just like weird punk because we're doing what we want to do. Yeah, they they helped like build the road for like a lot of later punk bands that started adding shit like that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm texting the Shimoda right now. We're scheduling me picking her up from. From places, right? Okay, because it's the end of the school year, so shit, they're out. It's all, all weird, celebrating. Yeah. yeah, doing the Dougie. No, um, don't do that anymore. Um, it's all about the uh, first. Let me uh, about the month. But yeah, it's I definitely so like emo is definitely taking uh, over. Because it's more interesting. Yeah, like especially with this band that I did a quick review on this week, it was Moose Blood. Like, um. There's sort of like that mix where Jimmy Eat World was, yeah, they were pop punk like a little bit, but then they leaned a little were, more towards. They were li- they were an emo band yeah. to me. Um, like and and like like you can tell that these e- these emo bands they're like they're doing things like beyond like the standard like bands that. Emo and I think bands the Wonder I think you're was it you who said like. Brand uh, the Wonder Years are sort of like the new brand new where they started off really pop punk and then that now they're just going to turn emo. Probably. Um, I think the Greatest Generation was definitely a step towards that. I think this next album, like whatever, have it's going to be, it's gonna be super I've dark. To- I've told, have I told you my theory about how all the Wonder Years albums are about the same kid? No. So. Oh uh, yeah, he has like a theory about like this heard. one it's, story. It's like how Tyler the Creator, all of his albums except for Cherry Bomb, are like about like this one like. Like, it's all about, like, what's the character? Do you have a character, or is it just Tyler? It's just Tyler, and then he's got, um... By the way, uh, I listen Tron to Cherry Cat, Bomb. and then... Uh, Dr. TC. Dr. TC, and all that stuff. By the stuff. way, I listened to Cherry Bomb. Didn't like it. It's just, like... It's got, like, two really good tracks on it for me, and then the rest of it's just filler. Right. And also, like, the production's really off. You can barely hear Tyler, and it's, like, really bothersome. Okay, going back to Bob Hunk. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, my theory, Wonder Years... All their albums are about the same kid going from his first year of college. Last like, year so of college. Far, 
first year to last year of college, and it's all like that. Because the first album is like... Well, the first album starts with my last semester, though. So how do you work that in? Last semester of high this school. Is like, mm. This is like Barrett's like, subject, because it's like... Tyler the, Tyler the Creator and The Wonder Years, though. Yeah, I love... And that's, I like, love, cause I love the, things for The him. reason I love Tyler the Creator is because of that story. And, um, also, and also because you listened to him right at that point in, like, high school. Where, you where, st- where I was smoking all the weed. Yeah. Um, but, um... And so, as I was saying, like... F- so, first and last year of college, right? It goes... Or like, from first to last. Yeah, because... T- because the first album is a... Uh, the first album is like the college freshman, Jack. Yeah, where he, he, <laughs> where they're like making fun of stuff. They're like super not taking themselves so seriously. Yeah, like uh, Sarah, like the like let's mosh your size. Yeah, the, or, uh, those. He, Subi hates those album like that album now. It's but kind I, of adorable, but I I treasure that album because it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and it's got like all those keyboards, and it's like and then like the Buzz like, Aldrin song. Yeah. I really like that song. It's pretend we are astronauts. Um, like and so like that's like someone's first year in college mm. and they're all just like yeah i'm gonna go to all the college parties and i'm gonna have a great time and i still live with my parents but mm. also i kind of don't because i stay over at my friends houses all the time so and then th- and then the upsides come the up. upsides and that's of... like okay i'm moving out of my parents house and then the... and like Wait and up. then, um, and so like the upsides is all him. Like, wow, this is like. I'm starting to realize, like, I'm like in this new city that I don't really know because the college is kind of out of town, mm. and that's why I was staying over at my friend's house all the time. Mm. But now I have to deal with the city, and it's new. And you can see that and in the I cover. Hate this town, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Upsides isn't like a favorite of mine. No, I don't think it's anybody's favorite. I think the obviously best uh, Wonder Years album is Suburbia. Yeah. Um, and and that one is sort of uh, going into a depression. Yeah, of... that's like their depressed album where it's like, I just don't like being in this town. I want to move back in with my parents. Yeah, and then it's sort of like letting all of the like uh, like depression and anxiety I'm... like take over you. And then the Greatest Generation the greatest is... Greatest Generation is like the release of it where yeah, it's like... Yeah, it's sort of letting go of all those troubles finally moving into a next chapter of your life sort of thing and and they're a great band God, yeah i love the wonder years and like the greatest generation is like the line that sealed it for me is what's that first line from i i want to sell just want to sell my funeral clear the apartment like yeah when he says clear the apartment he's clearing the wonder years history before that album mm. because that's like his evolution to the next phase because yeah. it's like before so like they get more and more serious, but then you get to the greatest generation, and greatest generation is like this release of the anger, mm. because it's like before he was trying to like hide it yeah. in himself, but now, but now you get like just those plain confessions, like in a uh, passing through a screen door, when he goes uh, during the, what, like, like what, what, are you, what part are you asking about? I'm 26. All the people I graduated with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, that is, like, just a plain, like, confession straight to the microphone. And then you got that chorus yeah, to this man. It's a very summer. honest, but very poetic honesty. Where, as real friends, It's just kind of... It's too honest, and it's not creative, like, whatsoever. Like, literally, in the song Cover You Up, where he's like, uh... I only miss you late at night when I can't sleep, and that's way too honest. And it's like, uh, yeah... That's why she loves you. <laughs> Thanks for spelling it out for us, uh-huh. dumbass. And then, like, it's and like... Because you, you can't, like, I love that you've gone through, all, like, all of these albums and really, like, delved deep into the Wonder Years and, like, what this, what his writing's about. You can't do that with any other fucking pop punk band. You can't. No. Like, straight up. There. Like, here, to me, it's like, it's like, you got, like, the poetic kind of honest, mm. like the Wonder Years, mm. the too honest... Like the real friends. Real friends. And then you have So Honest, it's hilarious, and you love them for it, like the front, the front bottoms. bottoms. Yeah. Because all the front bottom songs are just, like, just point blank, like... But at least they make, like, metaphors and, like, analogies and stuff. Real Friends is literally just... The, the, the... This happened, so that happened, and now I'm sad. All their songs yeah, are like, exactly. I jerk off in the car when I miss you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, it's, a, it's not even like I still a have song. A f- He's just talking. Yeah. I still have a fa- picture of your face and there's cum stains on it. <laughs> 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 so I think... That, uh, and then like... And so do it, here's the question I want to ask. Do we have too much... 
of an expectation for pop punk because you know we're not for the wonder years. We're we're artists in some way, shape, or form, and we and we do love pop punk in, in some sense. Are we? Are we trying to turn pop punk into something that it's not by expecting too much of it? I don't I think, think you I don't think it's too much to ask to try to write different songs that aren't about like <laughs> we sound girls. super whiny. Like I don't I know like you just got <laughs> back from the hospital, but I really want a sandwich, mom. Come on. I don't think it's asking a lot, but it's can not. I have a sandwich? <laughs> like if we don't have tuna, can you go get some? Fuck. Let's go. I'm sick of ding, my ding, mom. Ding, ding. She won't get me food when she's out of the hospital. The 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 thing is, Ricky probably did that to his mother. I've point. probably done that before. I don't know. Several times. Um, but like, cause I but like, I don't think it's too much to ask to write songs that are different write and songs meaningful, that sound, meaningful. Yes, songs. like Aaron West is like kind of like that evolution to the Wonder Years. Yeah. it's like a break between next album. I see that. I'm as scared. Like, I'm uh, our our good friend uh, Jake Stuckel, um was was telling me, dude, what if the Wonder Years break up? Because this sort of um, from the upsides to Greatest Generation was sort of like the ending of a trilogy, you know. And obviously, with like the sort of rift between Dan and like what he wants to do, and like what the rest of the band wants to do, like what what if this turns into a Tom Tom DeLonge DeLonge situation? situation. That's what I'm gonna compare it to. Jinx, Um, you owe me a Coke. (laughs) Um, I I can. You drank the last Coke. I did. I drank Um, a lot of Coke. It's my problem. um, And because and I think Tom DeLonge is a main like major problem of what the fuck is wrong with this. Fucking genre. Yeah. Um, because he brought the idea... He doesn't know how to write. He doesn't know how to write songs. His, uh, Do you ever listen to his courses? They're all one word repeated. Yeah. Like, um, down, 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 I miss you. Well, Mark, 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 Mark sings that. But I, I I appreciate that album. And I appreciate that song for several reasons. But I'm not going to say It's a great that. album. But if you listen to Tom DeLonge's solo album... Angels and Airwaves? No. <laughs> <laughs> His actual solo album, which came out like a couple months ago, was sorry, I pretend it didn't happen. Um, it was apparently like all of these like demos he was going to use for Blink's new album. That will never happen. It's such a pile of shit that you're just like, I'm actually glad that you're not in Blink anymore. I'm glad. Who replaced him? Uh, from, uh, Skiba, Matt yeah. Skiba from um, from um, Alkaline Trio. Or Alkaline oh Trio? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that band I always forget exists. Yeah, they're fun. Like I always yeah, hear them. They're, right. they're good, but they're not really. A, they're kind of like unwritten law. Um, like all those like pop punk emo band, like Hot Topic before Hot Topic got really into the thing. metal. Yeah. Um, now well, you go into Hot Topic, it's all like Attila shirts. No, dude, they started selling Real Here's Friends, Neck Deep. No, you go, so you go far. to Hot Topic and it's, it's all like TV show memorabilia. Shit, you're it's in like the wrong like, section. That that has its own section, and then there's the that seems section. like that's the whole dude. I walked thing into the I walked into the hot topic Excuse that's uh, near uh, near those two uh, targets mm. down in uh, <laughs> South San Francisco. Mm. There's Target, Hot Topic, Target. They had, <laughs> Pretty to, put much. A, they had in, to put a store. If in you between. don't understand, if you don't understand what we're talking about <laughs> here in San Francisco, there's a place called Ceremony. There's two separate targets literally across the street from yeah, each other. It's like there's the, a highway. It's like there's a highway yeah. in between both of them, but they're still literally there's, like one of them's yeah, connected to a mall. It's, and it's the Ceremony Cer- target, and then it's like, oh, this targets for Colma in general. Like, <laughs> well, who? No, it doesn't make sense. I so don't like, understand. So like. I went into so, the yeah, hot yeah, topic and it was like topic. Pierce the Veil, Sleeping with Sirens, like I've always feel they've always sort of been like that, um, and that sort of scene. That's yeah. why I buy my shirts at concerts, like when I got my suicide like like a, like a man. <laughs> <laughs> I fought for this Motorhead jacket. Um, I used no. to have a Motorhead jacket, jacket, but I lost it. That's sad. Connected mm. to this whole hot topic thing, but going back to the whole Wonder Years like breaking up thing, uh, I think like if they would break up, it wouldn't be a Tom DeLonge situation. Mm. At least like because of how talented he is. Yeah, Dan um, Campbell it, is actually like a really it, good song right It now. would turn I think song, I think right. if anything it would turn into a My Chemical Romance situation where we have these three albums where it's almost like a trilogy. It's like solid My Chemical Romance. Then they have one that's like wh- like kind of off which might be the next one. God, I hope not. I hope this next one of your album is I know I know, I know. Danger Days. I know, but even no 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 even if it's not as bad like if they do break 
breakup after this album. I think he's just gonna do solo shit and that it's he gonna be good. that he wants to do like um, Gerard, Gerard Way, Way where he's his... doing his whole like David Bowie thing, and I think it's yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, that album is actually really like he's, really awesome. He's doing uh, what he wants. Yeah. Like he's doing what he wants to, to do again. now, and it's great. Like yeah. even like Frank Iero or whatever. Yeah, or whatever his name is. He's whatever, do- however you say his it. career is less successful, but he's doing his thing and he's doing what he wants to do, and they're both equ- like, like almost yeah. equally successful. And, uh, if the Wonder Years break up. I want it to be like an Angels and Airways if plus the Wonder 44 Years situation. Break, if the Wonder Years break up, yeah. Pop Punk is dead, officially. Yes. Pop, Pop Punk isn't dead. We found our answer. Pop Punk is a dead. It's injured. Dead. It's, it's on hiatus. It's standing on its last fucking leg. It's on the floor going, uh, It's, go- it's got two feet in the grave and in the middle is a train track. <laughs> and here's the thing. People need to start focusing on the actually good bands. Like, mixtapes isn't a thing, but people should have focused on mixtapes when they were a thing. People are focusing too much on the story so far. Real yeah. friends. Real friends. Neck deep a little bit. Uh, like, I, I do like neck deep, but I... You hate uh, a day to remember. Yeah, like, like to when, remember. We went, when you took me to that Real Friends show, mixtapes w- was better than Real Friends. Yeah, they were, was like, great. way more interesting. The bands that people need to focus on... Forever Came Calling. Bruh. Mixtapes. Four Year Strong. Emo bands. Uh, emo bands. Wonder Years. Emo bands. Wonder Years. And the Wonder Years. And be a man. <laughs> um, that, yeah, it's just like uh, people are getting fooled by like this sort of repetition. Um, it's sort of like... A, a, we're sort of in the day and age of the early 60s where everything, every single song sounds the same. Every song is like either doo-wop so, or we're yeah. going to try to be Elvis. Exactly. Yeah. And then the same thing happens. And that's not what it's just pop punk. That's all the music that's going on right now, you know? Um, It all just kind of follows the same things. Like, all pop music is influenced by, like, trap music now. Unless it's easy listening stuff. I actually Um, like trap music because it's, like, the most drunken fight in song form. I'm punch you in the face, but I love you, Henry. Just know if I do punch you in the face, it's with love. Um, There's a little kiss at the end. It's like... (laughs) It's like as it's releasing off of you, it kisses you. So it's like, like um, hits and then lips form on my hand. <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. But um, like a headbutt with your lips. So I think we've come to our conclusion, our answer here. We're, we're running very long because we Pop do, we Punk had... will die when Derek Quimbley dies, so in about two years. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fuck. Damn. Can we just. Can I just say for a moment that he just needs to stop doing Sum 41? Because they're apparently recording another album, and it's no, just like, we don't dude, no one likes screaming bloody murder, dude. We don't need it. Just fucking, just, just live relax. the rest of your years, relax and relax. You, because you're, you're in a, a band. The, you fucked Avril he Lavigne. The, he went off the deep end with all this alcohol bullshit, like, and then he's gonna try to do another Sum Forty One album, and it's not gonna be. He's what he gonna wants, drink, and then he's gonna fucking die. Derek, the clock is ticking. <laughs> 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 your time's almost up. Do not waste it doing another Sum Forty One album. Bring back no effects. Um, no effects. <laughs> no. Um, no. So no I, I think we've come to our conclusion. Bring we, back we've, Scott Punk. We've we've run a little yes. long today, um, but but it, this was a very fun topic, and I'm glad that we that I brought it up. I'm glad we um, saved it for today. Um, and thank you so much for joining us here at BCG's Talking Shit. My name again is Barrett Courtney, and here is Henry Montiero and Ricky Baldazon. If you have a topic that you want us to talk some shit about, you can email us at bayazonagamers at gmail. You can tweet at us at bayazonagamers. You can tweet at me at Benandler Chong. You can tweet Henry at Enersaurus. You can not tweet Ricky because he's can, a basic you bitch. You can tweet me at Belangnersaurus. It's okay. Belangler. Um, Belangler. And if you want more of our stuff, just know that our Talking Shit epi- <laughs> episodes go up every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Our quick reviews go up every Monday. Our Let's Plays go up every Friday. And then every Wednesday... We have a live show, BZG News, on twitch.tv slash Gamers at 12.15 Wednesdays. Um, and thank you for joining us. And until next time, have a great day full of shit talking. I'm going to make a Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to make a Twitter account, and it's going to be called The Diddler. <laughs> it is me, isn't it?